Good afternoon, everyone. What if I told you that there exists today a the risk of chronic diseases can improve your overall mental and physical health? What if I also told you that that treatment has no negative side effects, right? No negative side effects. It wouldn't clash with any medication that you're taking. And the best part is that you wouldn't have to go see your doctor or pharmacist to renew your prescription. It would be free. Now, by show of hands in this room, if I offered you this treatment today, who here would take it? I thought so. <laughs> I thought so. And so, what is that treatment, right? What is that treatment that can combat all these chronic diseases? And the answer is very simple, physical activity, right? It's right at your fingertips. And now you're telling me, come on, Said, physical activity, all it does is it gets me sweaty, sore, and stinky. True. But it also improves your mental health and your physical health. It's free, and it saves the society millions and billions of dollars every year. So the billion-dollar question is, why isn't everybody exercising? If it's so efficient, why isn't everybody doing it? And that's a great question with a very complicated answer. And they're not exercising because, right? They're not exercising because the whole issue behind this is that it's not as easy as we think, right? It's not as easy as we think. And leisurely physical activity, so going to the gym, going for a run, or simply going for a bike ride, right, was not always in our DNA. We didn't always use physical activity as a leisurely method. We needed it to survive. If we look at the hunter-gatherers, they would cover between 10 and 30 kilometers every day in order to survive. If we look at stationary farmers, they would accumulate over eight hours of moderate to vigorous physical activity every single day. And they would stay seated for less than four hours a day. And in the same vein, if we look at the Amish population, they can accumulate between 14,000 and 18,000 steps every single day. Every single day. And you know what's funny about that? Is that the Amish population has the lowest rate of obesity, under 10%. In third world countries, 50% of women have to travel more than five kilometers every single day just to get water. And so if we look at through evolution, we are made to exercise. The ways our head sit on our shoulders, right? the way our lungs are evolved, the way our heart has evolved, our muscles, our bones, we're made to exercise. But along the way, something happened. <laughs> something happened. And although we're made to exercise, we're also made to be, we're also made to have fun, to have pleasure, and to be efficient. And that efficiency is what is leading us to these sedentary lifestyles. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines state that in order to be healthy, simply be healthy, we're not talking about Olympic athletes, simply to be healthy, the average Canadian should exercise between 150 minutes to 200 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every single week, simply to be healthy, All right? And studies came out and we looked at how active are Canadians. And they showed that only 15% of Canadians actually achieve that minimal standard just to be healthy, 15%. And what also they showed that was shocking is that most Canadians in an average day will spend close to 10 hours in a sedentary behavior, which means that they're sitting down in front of the couch, at work, at TV, watching TV, wherever. So 10 hours in a sedentary state. So the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology came up with their new Canadian Sedentary Behavior Guidelines, which state that on top of being active, Right? On top of being active, 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every single week, you also had to limit sitting time in order to decrease the health, the health risk that are associated with being sedentary. And so if we look at you know, where we're sedentary, if we look at through the age spectrum, right, which category of our population is the most sedentary? And the answer is older adults. Right? Older adults spend the less time moving and the more time sitting. And these numbers are not getting better. Absolutely not. With our aging demographics, these numbers are going to grow. 
and keep growing unless we do something. In Canada alone, the projections show that in 2025, 20% of Canadians will be age 65 and over. In 2035, a quarter of Canadians will be at retirement age. Right? And the Maritimes, especially Nova Scotia, are not spared by this aging demographics. If we look at the numbers in Nova Scotia, we can see that by 2025, a quarter of Nova Scotians will be aged 65 and over. And by 2035, that number rises to 33%. Right? One out of three are at retirement age in 2035. And closer to home in the Annapolis Valley, that doesn't change. Today, to this day, today, we can see that in the Annapolis Valley, 46% of the residents of the Annapolis Valley are age 55 years old and more. Right? So can we see this tsunami that's going to hit us? Can we see this wave of aging coming at us? And study that came out in 2015 from the Nova Scotia Health Authority states that the amount of years lost prematurely to chronic diseases is the highest in the Annapolis Valley, the highest in Nova Scotia, and amongst the highest in Canada. So we know we're aging, right? We're not active, we are aging. The question is, what can we do about it? And at Acadia, we created the Acadia Active Aging Program, the AAA program. And this program helps older adults overcome their barriers in order to partake in regular physical activity. Right? The whole purpose is to get them comfortable to come to the gym or come to the university to exercise in order to achieve the benefits to the brain, to the muscle, to the bones um, throughout physical activity. And the interesting thing is, is when I came to Acadia in 2014, this program had 25 individuals registered. Today, we have 65 older adults that are registered in the program, and we cap it off at 65 for safety reasons. But there is also a 160-person wait list to come into our program. And so people want to exercise. They've seen the benefits of physical activity, and they want to exercise. The need is there. The need is there. And to the point where we had to open three satellite programs in the Annapolis Valley to help meet the demand. We use our students and we engage our students to go out to these programs and work with our older adults. We've hired certified exercise physiologists to work in our programs, to change the way that we age. How the program works is very simple. For a minimal fee, the older adults will come to Acadia, use our facilities, and they'll train with a buddy, they'll train with a student. They come three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 9.30 to 10.30. And the reason behind that, one, resources, only three times a week, but also, we want them to reach that magic number of 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity in order to get health benefits. Everything they do on the side is bonus. Right? They're working with us to get to achieve 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity, and that's what we're looking to do. We want them to live longer, but we also want them to live healthier. And so the students register for a class with me, and they're assigned an older adult, and their goal is to build them a program to meet that older adult's needs. Their goal is to build them a program that the older adult can feel safe, and that's actually effective in helping them out. And so what I tell my students all the time is, use your creativity. I am not holding you back here. The whole purpose of this is for you to get creative. I will give you foundation tools. I will give you knowledge. But it's up to you to create your own recipe, your own recipe of success. And what I've noticed is that students start coming to class with questions. They start asking the right questions. They're intrigued, right? And they start using their critical thinking to solve these problems. And what more do you want from an instructor than your students using critical thinking? And to show you at what point some of our students appreciate this program, they come back for a second, third, and even fourth year, not because they fail my class. I'm not that mean but because they enjoyed and they come back as volunteers to work in the program and continue working with their buddy. 
And so another part of the Acadia Active Aging program that we can inspire change is through research. We use this program as a research tool in order to understand the very complex aging process. Aging is not a simple process. It's not just one system that ages. There's multiple systems that age at the same time, the brain, the heart, the lungs, right, the bones. And so we collaborate with schools at Acadia. Kinesiology will collaborate with psychology, with dietetics, right? We'll collaborate with other schools in Canada, and we'll also collaborate with schools in Europe in order to try to understand the aging process. And so you can see our studies will vary between, you know, trying to understand how the brain works with exercise to trying to understand how the heart actually reacts to different types of exercise. Which one's the best? How do we make it work? So all these questions are asked, and then we can come up with answers. And the interesting thing is that these results are published, these results are presented all over the country, all over the world. That's great. But what interests me as an educator is to take the results that we're getting from these studies and to reinvest it in the program. That's the whole purpose. Now my students can work with evidence-based research. And that's something that I'm proud of. <laughs> the way I measure success in our program, the way I measure success in our program is not by the weight on the scale or how many weights that they can push or whatnot. The way I measure success is through Della, people like Della. I'll tell you a little story. Della came to see us two years ago. She was in a walker, she couldn't walk. She had joint issues, she had arthritis, she had chronic diseases. And she was very scared to go to the gym again because she was scared that people would judge her. So she came to see us and she said, you know what, my goal is to walk around a 200 meter track that you have here at Acadia, indoor track. I want to walk around it once. I said, perfect. That's your goal? That's good with me. And so we got working on our goal. We didn't bring her to the track right away. We brought her to the gym. She got stronger. We improved her fitness. We improved her confidence. And so four months after she came into our program, we took, we took Della to the track. And off she went. One lap. Two laps. Three laps. Four laps. All the way up till nine laps. She performed nine laps without stopping. And when she was finished, she walked over to her husband. He fell in his arms and started crying. That's how we measure success. That's how we measure change. That's what we're looking to do with our program. In a society where we're driven by goals and objectives and weight and image, Della is how we measure success, how we measure change. And I'll leave you with a very simple quote. We do not stop exercising because we grow old. We grow old because we stop exercising. Thank you very much.